Hello, star friends. You're watching Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird. Just a reminder that I'm recording this on March 13th, and there's a total eclipse of the moon tonight. We have videos plus charts and other info, so check out earthsky.org or earthsky on YouTube for lots more about tonight's eclipse. And I'll be back here on YouTube tomorrow to show you eclipse photos from the Earth Sky community. But I'm here today to tell you about the second big event for March 2025, and that's the equinox on March 20th. It's when the sun crosses the celestial equator, moving from south to north, bringing spring and summer to the northern hemisphere. So the news you probably have noticed is just weird all over, right? So stay with us and treat yourself to some awe. I'm gonna tell you what you can see in the sky on and around this equinox. But first, what is an equinox? Here's Earth from outer space. And thanks to NASA's space age technologies, we can see something our ancestors never saw, this wonderful movement of Earth's terminator line. That's the line between day and night on the Earth over the course of a year. And notice how the orientation of this line is changing. Earth's tilt isn't changing, but the angle of sunlight striking Earth is changing as our world orbits the sun. And on the September and March equinoxes, light is spread evenly across the globe and is seen from outer space. Earth's terminator line, the line between light and dark, runs from pole to pole. So that's one definition of equinox. It's the day that light is spread most evenly across the entire Earth. So that was the equinox from space. But what about from the ground? What can we notice in the sky around this equinox? January and February featured evening planet parades. And even in early March, we could still see four planets each evening, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and Mercury. But here in mid-March, Mercury and Venus are getting very near the sunset. Venus is so bright that you might still catch it. Look low in the west shortly after sunset when your sky is still pink and orange. And here's an image, this is tough to see, but it's, it's gonna be tough to see this. This is an image of Venus uh, in bright twilight taken yesterday by Earth Sky's own Raul Cortez. And Raul is a co-author on Earth Sky's daily sun update. And if you have a telescope, you can see Venus in a crescent phase now, and you can just see that little crescent there. Uh, Venus is going to pass between the Earth and Sun just two days after the equinox on March 22nd, 23rd. Venus will pass just 8.4 degrees north of the Sun in our sky on that day. And the Observer's Handbook of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, which is our go-to source for all things night sky, says that for a few days around the March 22nd, 23rd equinox, or around March 22nd, 23rd, when Venus goes between the Earth and Sun, it'll be visible in bright twilight, uh, both after sunset and before sunrise. So Venus is leaving the evening sky, but no worries, it'll quickly pass into the morning sky. And this chart shows the morning sky, uh, the Eastern sky in late March, you'll find very bright Venus. Okay, so what about Saturn? It was one of the planets in the January and February planetary alignments also. So Saturn was in conjunction with the sun yesterday, and that means that it passed on the far side of the sun from Earth. So we can't see Saturn in our sky right now, but the robot eyes of NASA's SOHO spacecraft caught it. And in this image, the sun is behind an occulting disk um, but you can see Saturn uh, passing 10 degrees from the sun in yesterday's daytime sky. We won't see Saturn again until sometime later in April. And then like Venus, it'll have moved into the east 
before dawn. So here are the easy planets around the March equinox in the evening sky, red Mars and very bright Jupiter. Look for both of them along the sun's path or ecliptic. That's the green line on our charts. Earth is fleeing ahead of Mars in orbit right now. So Mars is getting dimmer, but it's still pretty bright and it's very red and Jupiter is brighter than all the stars. But what the equinox sky lacks in planets, it makes up for with this wonderful sky phenomenon. This is the zodiacal light. Zodiacal is named for the word zodiac. And this eerie and mysterious light can be seen from dark sky locations in the weeks around the equinox. So you could see this tonight. This image is from Earth Sky community member Jeff Andrew in Colorado. The zodiacal light is that hazy pyramid shape that you see here. That whole big structure there of light is the zodiacal light. And from the northern hemisphere, it'll appear around the equinox when all traces of twilight have left the evening sky. From the southern hemisphere, you'll see it in the east before dawn. So what is this mysterious light? It's long been known as sunlight reflecting off dust grains that move in the plane of our solar system. Asteroids and comets were thought to be its source. But in 2021, scientists working with the Juno spacecraft, which is now orbiting Jupiter, announced a serendipitous discovery by Juno, suggesting that Mars dust storms are the source of the zodiacal light. And this illustration shows how the distribution of dust grains in our solar system matches the orbit of Mars. So think of Mars and those global dust storms on Mars when you see the zodiacal light this month. And now auroras, yes, there is an aurora season which comes around the spring and fall equinoxes each year. This pattern in nature, auroras increasing twice a year is one of the earliest patterns ever to be observed and recorded by scientists. So we're now past the peak of the current 11 year sunspot cycle, cycle 25, but we still have more solar activity now than a few years ago. And that means more auroras. And you can check out earthsky.org to learn why there are more auroras visible around the equinoxes. And the answer has to do with magnetism and geometry. So you can also come to earthsky.org for our daily sun update. And we tell you when to expect auroras. Okay, so stars uh, near the moon, using the moon as a guide, you can identify these stars. After tonight's total lunar eclipse, the moon will be waning and rising later at night. It'll be near the bright star Spica in the constellation Virgo on March 15th and 16th. And afterwards, the moon will wane so much that your bedtime might come before moonrise. So you might start seeing the moon only in the morning sky, uh, the sky visible before sunrise. And if you're up that early on the mornings of March 18th and 19th, watch for the waning moon near the stars Zubin el Janubi in the constellation Libra and the bright red star Antares in Scorpius. But an even better morning to see Antares near the moon will be the morning of the equinox itself, March 20th. And as this chart shows you, as dawn is breaking on this March 2025 equinox, you can look outside and see the moon right next to Antares. Uh, and Antares is a bright red star. It's known as the heart of the scorpion. Look up and you can't miss them. And while you're out there, wait a while for the sunrise because there's something very special about the equinox sunrises and sunsets. And that is the equinox sun always rises due east and sets due west. On the equinox, the sun is crossing the celestial equator, the imaginary line directly above Earth's equator. And for all of us on Earth, all of us, the celestial equator intersects our horizons at points due east and due west. 
So the March and September equinoxes are great times to locate those directions with respect to your favorite spot for observing. And knowing east and west will help you in your quest to see things in the night sky. And remember that Earth never stops moving in orbit around the sun. So if you do locate due east or due west, sunrise or sunset points on your horizon, you can start to track that point over time. And you'll see that as we move toward the June solstice, the sunrise and sunset points on the horizon will shift toward the north. It's lots of fun to track the sunrise or sunset point. It's super easy to do. And you can do it, for example, by placing tape on a window or along a fence line. And every few evenings you can do that between now and the June solstice. And if you do that, uh, it'll really help you feel as if truly you really are riding on a planet orbiting a star. So that's all I've got for you today. But I'll be back tomorrow, March 14th, with images of tonight's total eclipse of the moon. And I want to thank you for watching and for helping us reach 50,000 subscribers. Wow, we love you. Thank you. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky.